Thank you, Craig. I was honored to receive this award in my name in 2010. Tonight, I have the honor and privilege to present the Lori Kaufman Volunteer Award to my dear friend, Martin Cornan. Martin began his relationship with AFC after a positive HIV diagnosis at 23. Through the AIDS Drug Assistance Program, Martin was able to receive treatment and medication, helping him to be healthy and to thrive. I met Martin two years later when Cullen's Bar and Grill and the Mercury Theater opened on Southport Avenue. We began attending events together for the Chicagoland HIV community. In 2007, Martin opened Wild Bar and Restaurant in Lakeview with the pursuit of creating community and giving back. He joined the AFC Board of Directors in 2008 and has supported AFC's programs and events by providing meeting and event space, food donations, gift certificates, and sponsoring events. Martin's generous donations and volunteer efforts have helped AFC cut costs by $50,000. Martin's restaurant group has since expanded to four locations, which also support other LGBTQ plus HIV agencies like TPAN, Howard Brown Health, and Chicago House. He most recently opened The Birdcage, Chicago's newest queer bar, which promotes inclusion and sex positivity. This evening, I am humbled and honored to present the Lori Kaufman Volunteer Award to my dear friend, Martin. Thank you, Lori. I'm honored to receive this award from an agency that has done so much for not only me, but the community around me. I came here from Ireland at 21, completely in the closet. I turned 23 and learned I was HIV positive, still in the closet. I found TPAN for HIV support meetings in the early days. It was a completely different world then, so much shame and stigma being an out HIV positive man. At the time, I had work with great insurance, but I started a job I loved at Collins, a restaurant and bar which provided no insurance coverage. Through the AIDS Drug Assistance Program, I was able to receive the medications I needed to remain virally suppressed. After opening our first restaurant, Wild, I wanted to get involved at a deeper level and make a difference, so I joined the AFC Board of Directors. Knowing I had an opportunity to help financially, sourcing liquor and wine donations, providing a gathering space, food donations for events and gift certificates for community members, I was on the board when PrEP became readily available and AFC was at the forefront to ensure it changed the story of undetectability. Since then, U equals U has been a force for change in seeing people's view of others living with HIV. This has had a major impact on me personally and until recently I was not public about my own HIV status. PrEP helped change that for me and for many others. Since then, I was able to expand and open three more restaurants, one of which is the Birdcage, where we are today. Inclusivity created the Birdcage, a space that was not judging, a safe space for everybody. It has been an important part of my journey and as a part of giving back. Our open call for employees was simple, kind people with a good sense of humor who wanted to make a difference in our community. We had an overwhelming response to that call and created a staff of family. We held safe space meetings once a month to gather and share our journeys with one another, unapologetically and supportively, which allowed the space to become what it needed to be. Gay bars have always been a place where we can socialize, and now it's a part of spiritual growth, support and healing. My hope was to start opening these meetings up to the community at large as a place and space for all to gather and share. Creating a movement within these walls, we as a team and a staff can expand that growth and healing for others in the community. Sadly, because of the prolonged pandemic, the birdcage is currently closed. The momentum this place had and the bonds we created here, that sense of community is taken from all of us right now. My hope is that soon we can provide a safe space once again 
and have a positive influence on our growing community. Thank you to AFC, the board and staff, and my friend Laurie Kaufman for this award. I am proud to be a member of the AFC family now and for years to come. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Cynthia Tucker, and it is with great pleasure that I award the Community Impact Award from AIDS Foundation Chicago to Dr. Choi Yen Belusi. The award culminates over 15 years of collaboration and partnership with AFC. AFC has collaborated with Dr. Choi Yen Belusi to support people living with HIV and hepatitis C a virus that impacts 21% of people living with HIV. Dr. Belusi is a physician specializing in infectious diseases, community-based HIV-focused programs, community engagement, and mobilization and advocacy work. Dr. Belusi shared with AFC her clinical research excellence, work on health disparities, and work with marginalized populations. Dr. Belusi is an excellent collaborator with AFC on projects such as Getting to Zero Illinois, the Hepatitis C Virus Elimination Task Force, the HIV and Aging Project, the Women's Connection, and countless, countless trainings and educational conferences. She has been a vital part of assisting in creating a more robust HIV workforce. For over two decades, she has been actively engaged in community-based programs, research, and practice with women, HIV and aging, and hepatitis C service delivery. Throughout her career, she has worked collaboratively with AFC to develop, implement, and evaluate Chicago interventions and programs. She brings immense dedication, meaningful real-time insights, and invaluable knowledge and capability to many program collaborations. On a personal note, I have had the chance to work closely with Dr. Belusi and have had the privilege to read her book. And she has fostered learning and served the whole person. Her passion and commitment to community highlights the ex exceptional person that she is. She is creative, passionate, and innovative, and is always open to being there for community. Quite simply, she is excellent and brings immense experience, empathy, and service to all community projects. It is my honor and privilege to award Dr. Toya Belusi the AFC Community Impact Award. Thank you so much, Cynthia Tucker, for this award, and thank you to AFC um, for this incredible community award. I am incredibly honored and humbled to be receiving this award and I do not take this for granted. I'm a physician and have been for many years, and I believe that as physicians, we are advocates. We are called to be advocates for the people we care for. Our advocacy goes beyond the four walls of the exam room. It goes beyond the clinic wall. It goes to the communities from which our patients come from. I first got to learn about AFC in um, 1999, my first year at the core center where I've had a continuity clinic caring for people living with HIV. And I saw firsthand the impact of AFC and the work they do around case management, training, education, advocacy on the lives of our patients. We know that it goes beyond viral suppression. It's about keep giving people the quality of life they desire and helping them get to those goals. And AFC does that in terms of case management and all the other opportunities. I got to do over the many years, many things, you know, speak. I got to work with the community. I got to do AIDS walks every year where I got to see similar people all around the world and around the country supporting the mission and the goals of AFC. As an advocate for someone who believes in what we do, I have my years at, at the core center in Cook County for 20 years, have been involved in programs, not just for getting people virally suppressed or preventing HIV, 
but looking at the need for the community, listening intently and creating programs that help people live the best lives they can. Some of those things have included working on aging and really looking out for our long-term survivors who have been in this fight from the beginning and who sometimes feel left out in our efforts around prevention and getting people undetectable. Very important goals, but sometimes we forget about our long-term survivors. I don't, and I know FC doesn't. In terms of they were there, pioneers for the fight, in all the research studies, in all the things that we've done and learned from, I need to continue to work with them. So we'll talk about getting to zero because that is really our goal for uh, to get to zero by 2030 in Illinois, and I believe that. And I'll tell you why. The tenants of that plan, a very bold and ambitious plan, are very attainable, and I believe that more than ever, this is the time where we have tools for treatment and for prevention. It's a plan to get to zero new HIV infections in Illinois by 2030. Not a city, not a jurisdiction, the entire state. And if we do it well, and when we do it well, we will have be a model for other states in the country and other parts of the world about how we can get to zero. Our tenants rest on 27 or 22 goals, more than 78 strategies, but these are attainable because the process involved the community. AFC was the platform where we all came together, departments of public health, the city and state departments, looking at other partners outside of healthcare, looking at small community organizations, looking at large institutions, looking at who's doing the messaging. I personally enjoyed my time being part of the work around getting to zero and developing the plan. Those meetings were diverse and they were inclusive. And that is what we want, a, a workplace, workplaces that are diverse, that are inclusive. And I got to learn so much for the planning committee. We had people from all walks of life in different aspects of healthcare and partnerships outside of healthcare. Because for us to get to zero, we need everyone's buy-in. We need buy-in in marketing, in communication. We need to look at immigration reform. We need to look at other parts of poverty elimination, looking at dismantling racism to actually get to where we need to do to get to zero. And AFC understands that, bringing people together. When we fundraise at those AIDS work and those fun events that we do during the year, the money goes directly to the services that the clinics need. At the core center, we've raised funds through AFC, run and work to be able to give back to our patients, do things like you know GED uh, training, driver's license applications, helping with housing, and AFC does a whole variety of those things because we know that beyond viral suppression, we have to look at what do people need, how they need it, and to get them there. Regardless of what is going on, Every day I remain grateful for the opportunity to do what I do, to be part of the solution, to work with an incredible organization like the AIDS Foundation of Chicago, to work with community advocates and people around the, the city and state committed to getting to zero new infections, embracing you equals you, um, eliminating stigma and eliminating disparities in the work that we do. So I am incredibly grateful. I thank AFC and all my friends here who have been my friends for years, walking towards the cause. And I implore you to support AFC as we get to zero in the state of Illinois. Thank you so much. AFC is proud to serve a diverse community made up of LGBTQ plus individuals, people of all genders, ages, races, and ethnicities. HIV disproportionately impacts communities of color, namely transgender women of color, black and Latinx gay and bisexual men, and cisgender black women. From the communication strategies to the policy priorities, AFC makes sure its work centers and is inclusive, affirming, and celebratory of these communities. In doing so, AFC has caught the attention and sparked pride in supporters nationwide. Let's hear from a few of them now. Hi, Chicago and all AFC supporters. This is Amy Landecker. I am on the set of um, Your Honor, which is a new show on Showtime coming December 6th. That's my little plug. Um, and I just wanted to wish you happy 35. Uh, back in the day, I used to work there. I did event planning. I know uh, how this goes, but I have no idea how this goes at this time in history. 
and I'm just glad I could be there with you virtually. Um, the AIDS Foundation of Chicago does the most incredible work. I'm so honored to have been associated with it. And, um, and uh, yeah, um, I miss you all and I love you all. And um, here's to being of service and changing the world. Hey everybody, I'm Chef Blake of Black Rose Pastries. You guys may have seen me on Food Network baking competition shows or Netflix Sugar Rush. I've been working with the AFC for the past couple of years by way of World of Chocolate Charity event in an effort to raise funds and awareness for getting to zero. Whether we know it or not, we've all been afflicted by the HIV and AIDS pandemic. I myself have lost a couple of family members, so I understand how important it is to continue this effort. I want to congratulate the AIDS Foundation of Chicago on Gala 35. That's right, they're turning 35 years old. I'm super excited to be a part of this journey, and I'm asking all of you guys to continue to support. Congratulations, and I'm looking forward to growing and getting to zero. Thanks, guys. Hi. This is Alexandra Billings. Congratulations, AFC, on 35 years of incredible community service. You know, I've been living with HIV now since b before there was dirt. And when I was first diagnosed, there was nothing. We just lost our whole community. But the folks at AFC saved our lives. I, I tell you, honestly, they, they say that it was the medications. It wasn't just the medications that you all gave me financial help, spiritual help, emotional help. I, I, that was a safe place for someone at a time when there was no safe places for us. So thank you. And until we find a cure, let's stay in the fight. Hi, I'm Vanessa Williams, and I wanna send a big congratulations to AIDS Foundation Chicago for its 35 years of leading the movement in Illinois to support the HIV community. And cheers to this evening's honorees, Fred E. Kanner, Dr. Toyin Falusi, Martin Kernan, and Walgreens. Your commitment and dedication is appreciated by all. Have a great night. Hi, my name is Curtis Montgomery. And I just wanna say happy 35th anniversary to AFC. Congratulations on a job well done great services you have given us throughout the years and just want to say thank you for all the work you have done. My name is Tracy Baim. I'm co-founder of Windy City Times newspaper which was actually founded the same year of AIDS Foundation of Chicago in 1985. When I first started working in gay media in the prior year there were fewer than 100 diagnosed cases of HIV AIDS in the city. In fact the naming of HIV and AIDS was pretty recent at that point. But we had seen what was happening on the coasts and luckily learned a lot of lessons from them. The most important thing I think was the collaboration between communities and when AIDS Foundation of Chicago came along that year, it really upped the level of response that our community did. It brought in mainstream people who were not directly affected that they thought of, um, who supported the work of the LGBTQ community that year. So it was a really important addition to the landscape. There were lots of other organizations that were cropping up that were service providers or were protesting uh, the lack of government response and resources. And AIDS Foundation of Chicago did a terrific job of shepherding those groups together um, in collaboration. I think it's been a model across the country for that. People have looked to AFC since its very founding for the principles of collaboration. Kim and I really came together and said, let's put together an organization here that's about action and not just talking, but does take the lessons from think tanks. So eventually, um, one of the, our colleagues that came with us uh, suggested the name Pride Action Tank. And one of the things Kim and I both also knew is that small, very small organizations will not last without partnerships. And Kim had run Affinity Community Services as a one or two person shop for many years. And we didn't want that for Pride Action Tank. So we started to meet with AIDS Foundation of Chicago, and it was actually the only organization we had any official meetings with, to really decide that that would be the best future for Pride Action Tank to sustain over time, not driven by any one individual. So we were very fortunate that John Peller saw that vision as well, that it matched with what AFC was doing in terms of broadening its impact in issues that are related to HIV AIDS, but some people don't always see as connected, like housing and other stuff. 
So Pride Action Tank, really from near its launch, has been partnered with AFC and it's been a terrific partnership. I think it's great not just for Pride Action Tank, but it's been wonderful for AFC because they've had the talents of Kim Hunt to do other larger AFC issues and advocacy and lobbying and all sorts of things, as well as staff member Jackie Thaney, who's just invaluable to any project I've ever been in. So I think that partnership has worked really well and I hope I, it's definitely been a two-way street. When I had to step away two years ago off the board to become publisher of the Chicago Reader, I knew it was in great hands. I didn't have any hesitancy. And it was wonderful to see my baby was, was doing well. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of great partnerships to come. Help is what we've always given. So thank you to our helpers at BMO and beyond. Thank you to the healers, the fighters, the all-nighters, the cleaners, the movers, the 18 wheelers. Thank you to the farmers, the grocers, the above and beyonders. Thank you to all the frontliners for keeping our lives moving when the world needs to stop.